Okay. There are just a couple of announcements. Let me get a copy of today's lab. Okay. What happens with number one? We're on the front page. Roman number one, A, underground mass on a piece of paper with a quick jerk. I'm not talking about your lab mate. Pull the paper. What happens to the mass? Doesn't move. Okay? What property of matter does that action demonstrate? You should. Huh? Okay. Somebody earlier, when I asked, they said something about the tendency to maintain a state of motion or rest. Inertia. Is what? Inertia. Inertia, exactly. That's inertia. Okay. Now. The second part of the lab, I'll need two volunteers. <laughs> two volunteers. Okay. We can sit here all night. Uh, two volunteers. Anybody will do. It's not hard. Don't need to be afraid. Okay. Here's one volunteer. I need one more. Okay, I've got all mine. Okay. Thank you so much. Alright. Now, you volunteer first, you want to go first? Okay. Now, what you do here, here, folks, if you'll take a look, are two 200 gram masses suspended by thread. With threads underneath them as well. So, uh, Tyler, Tyler. What Tyler's going to do is take the bottom thread.
thread, wrap it around the finger, and then very, very slowly increase the pull. And pull and pull until one of the threads break. Y'all watch and see which thread breaks. Very slowly, gently pull. Pull. Oh, which thread broke? The top one. The top one. Okay. Justin's going to come over here. Everybody pull that in. Justin's going to come over here and wrap the bottom thread around his finger. Okay. Ready with me? Are we listening? Are we listening? Oh, yeah. Okay. What he's going to do is, with a lot of slack in it, he's going to pull very quickly down. One very quick pull. Lots of slack. Pull straight down. Straight down. Straight down. Slack, 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 Now, everybody saw that? What you need to do now is you do you use Newton's law of motion, explain the difference in the two outcomes. Why did Tyler's the top string break, but um, Justin's the bottom string break? Newton's law of motion. Oh, they were threads off the same spool of thread, and the length didn't matter. You know, this handle was up a little bit from the other end. Now what? Okay, the first one. Uh, Tyler pulled gently, 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 and kept increasing the pull until the top string broke. Justin over here had a lot, a lot of slack in it, and then pulled really abruptly, and the bottom string broke. But the first one, he pulled more force off, though. He pulled more um, tension. Okay. Is that a word? That is a word. And you're getting really <laughs> close to it. Okay. If you think about this, on that first one, what were the forces acting on the two strings? On the bottom string, it was his pull. On the top string, you had the weight plus the pull. So there was more net force on the top string than on the bottom string. Okay, okay. so you got that? And which of Newton's laws deals with net force? The second law. Okay, so the first string was obeying Newton's second law, which great more great net force on the top string because you had the weight of the mass plus the pull. So the top string broke. Top thread broke. Okay, how about the second one? Did y'all notice? It's not moving a little bit, but when he first did it, it was absolutely. No motion on the mass at all. Think about what y'all were just doing here. There's a mass on the paper. There's a sudden pull. What happened? It, it's moved. The same thing here with the sudden jerk. I'm not saying anything about that. Okay. Uh, with, with the sudden pull, the top mass. It didn't respond at all. It stayed right where it was. Its inertia kept it in place, so it didn't transmit any much force to the top one. And what's that? A measure of tendency to stay right where it was. The first law, the law of inertia, Newton's first law. So the second pull, the sudden jerk, was the uh, Newton's first law. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Now, what we're going to do now. Okay. I think we're 
probably use this table here because there's only one person at it. And what I want somebody to come and do is uh, zero the scale and determine the mass of our big ball. Anybody? Yeah, very good. All the momentum initially was with this ball, right? That was 
and they rest. But on collisions, what happens? Yes, it transfers the momentum to the second ball, and this one momentarily was at rest. Now, here's why it didn't stay at rest. Because there's two types of momentum. We've been talking about linear momentum. But you see, this was rolling down the track, but also had a little bit of angular momentum. So, therefore, after the collision, the angular momentum makes it just take it over the road. We're going to ignore that. That's why I tried to do it quickly so it could slide down the track rather than roll the head roll above. So, first is you describe what happened to the two balls. Okay. And you can number either one on ball one or ball two, whichever. Okay, have you done B, everybody? Y'all watching? Okay. You got one of the two balls there. All right. Everybody finished? Uh, it's going to show up. Okay. Whichever you name, go on or two. That's up to you. Approximate the momentum of the two balls before the collision. Now, whichever ball you call the rolling one, whichever you call the the stationary, one on ball one, one on ball two, whichever you name it, what was the initial momentum of ball one? That feels like the speed to me. But it depends on which one you start. Okay, yeah. Which one? You know which one. If it's a stationary ball, the momentum was zero. If it's a rolling ball, what was it? No, that's the speed. Not the momentum. One. What would be the momentum? What is momentum? Mass or mass? Mass times the velocity. Okay. And what was the mass? Big ball. Second. Zero six five. What was it? Zero six five times one, which is point zero six five kilogram meter per second. Kilogram meter per second. Oh, and by the way, folks, I forgot to tell you the other measure of momentum. Kilogram meter per second is one, but if you remember, impulse was also a change of momentum, and that would be a Newton second. A Newton second is the same as a kilogram meter per second. I forgot to tell you that. Okay. But now, initial momentum of ball two. Now, whichever one you're calling one and two, you decide that one of them is going into one. And one of them is going to zero. Not one. At one of those momentum we talked about. So what was the initial momentum of the system of the two balls? Y'all describe those balls. You 
choose which one, call one, two, or three, I don't care. Describe the motion of the ball. Did everybody see it? No. Okay, that's what I said. Are y'all watching? Everybody watching now that hasn't seen it. Okay? Did a momentum seem to be conserved? Yes. Because all the momentum was in the first ball, and at the end, all of it was in the last ball. So it seemed to be the same momentum. Okay. So that's number L. Schedule's going to eat up most of this week, but hopefully over the weekend I'll get it. 
some of the grain is all outside. Oh, not some of it, but a little bit so far as in the last. Yeah. All outside of the last. And even the things I have got graded, I don't really like it. Okay. So, everybody ready for this will be eight. Oh. One of the large balls is on the track at rest, right? I'm going to roll the small ball toward the large ball. Now, I'm going to try to do about a meter per second. Someone predict what's going to happen on the collision. Okay, how about the small ball? Stop. Okay, so the prediction is the small ball is going to stop, the big ball is going to roll, but at explorer speed. Now that sort of kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because this has less momentum because it's much smaller mass, but larger speed. The large ball will be a larger mass, but less speed. If that works, but let's see if it does. Okay? Can everybody see? Yeah! Okay, here we go. So I'm trying to do one meter per second. <laughs> what happens? They both move. They both move. Okay? But you're right, the large ball did move at a slower rate of speed, but the small ball rebounded. Okay? Now, when they're equal mass, you don't see that happen. When it's less than mass, this does bounce off, just like throwing a ball on the wall, it's going to bounce off. Did you say the rebound was about the same as the initial speed? Uh, I would say it couldn't be. Well, I guess it could be, but it probably wasn't quite going to be. Yeah, 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 but here's what's happening. I mean, it bounced back. It's a very good question. Yeah. All the initial momentum was in a small ball, and it wasn't really all that much. Yeah. It hit the big ball, it gave the large ball momentum, but it lost. Not just stopped, but lost and went in the opposite direction. But actually, the big ball had more momentum coming this way than the small ball had coming this way to begin with. Because if the small ball lost momentum and made negative momentum, the more went to the large ball. But it still was slower than the initial. However, you want to decide that. Here, the momentum was conserved. Yeah. Yeah. Always did. Yeah. 
Now we got one more to do here. Right from the bottom of the page or on the back of the page, if you don't know, like that. The first part of the number L, we rolled one ball towards two stationary balls. So this is a lot harder to do, but I'm going to try to do it. So roll two stationary, I mean, one stationary, roll two moving balls towards one stationary. Any prediction? Remember the test on chapter two is the last Thursday on Thursday. It's okay. I was talking crap for the episode. The first two hours we'll do chapter three. The next two hours we'll do the last chapter. First last for chapter.
Okay, I'm going to shut this down.